This is the second video for Chapter 1 in an introduction to STEM programming with Python 3. The name of this presentation is Variables. I'm Dr. James M. Renault, PhD from Shawnee State University, and I'll be going over the topic with you in this video. In this presentation, we'll be discussing what is a variable, the valid variable names, the syntax of valid variables, how to assign values and <coughs> results of expressions to variables, and then how to use variables to get those values back. To start this presentation, let's talk about what is a variable. A variable in a computer programming language is a little different than a variable in a mathematical expression, but it has a lot of similarities. A variable basically is a label that's assigned to a spot in the computer's memory. This spot in the computer's memory is where we can store values as the program is executing. And the program can access that spot in the computer's memory and uh, change the values or update the values as the program runs. Once the program is finished running, though, the computer takes those spots in the computer's memory, erases them, and returns them back to the list of free memory in your computer. So variables are very short-term temporary storage locations used as your program executes. One thing about a variable is a variable must be assigned a value before you try to retrieve a value from the variable or you'll receive an error. We may see that in some of the examples coming up. Each computer programming language has its own specification of what a variable name can contain, what letters and things a variable can, can a variable name can contain. And Python uses a very simple naming nomenclature that all variable names must begin with a letter, either upper or lower case, or an underscore. It must contain only letters, numbers, and underscores. And variable names are case sensitive. If you have a variable called capital A, it's not the same as the variable lowercase a. They're two different variables. Even though they have the same name, they're made of different characters, upper and lower case letters. A variable name can be of any general length, but uh, the thing when you're naming your variables, when you're naming your spots in the computer's memory, the real trick, and, and what I would suggest is that you give your variable names meaningful names. Names that mean something to you, the programmer. Names that mean something about the program and about what that variable is going to be containing. Just makes sense. And it'll make your programs a lot more easy to a lot easier to read. You remember a couple of slides ago, I said that we must assign a variable a value before we can use it. We use the equal sign to assign a variable a value. We say variable name equals something. Now, the something can be a literal, an expression, the result of a calculation, a function, all kinds of different things. But let's just keep it simple and say variable equals something. And you can see the little picture here off to the side that it, it shows that a 9 is being assigned to the variable when you say a equals 9. Here is a very simple program that assigns three variables. Yep, assigns, yep, there, over there. Assigns three variables, um, the variable item, a string, plastic, uh, blue plastic parrot, the variable cost, the float 3.98, and the variable quantity, the integer 12. If you notice that the, this, out, this program outputs nothing because we don't print the values or do anything with it, we create the three values in the computer's memory, assign them the values, and then the program ends and they're deleted and returned back to the, uh, return back to the computer as free space. So this program doesn't do anything, but it does create three variables and assigns 
three different types of values to those three variables. In Python, to get the value out of a variable, all you have to do is use the variable's name anywhere in your program that you would put a literal value or any other kind of value. You just put the variable name in the expression, in the print statement, in the mathematical expression, anywhere, and it will then get the value from the variable that's in the variable at that moment and use it in the expression. Let's see what that looks like. This example takes the uh, three variables that we assigned in the earlier example of the item cost and quantity. On line eight, notice that it creates another variable called extended, but extended contains the cost times the quantity. Well, so the extended would contain, the variable extended, would contain 3.9 times 12 because cost was assigned to that and quantity was assigned to that in a previous statement. Line nine is an example of a print with multiple arguments and you can see it prints the extended cost of quantity, which is a variable. Oh, the extended cost of Oh, the extended cost of quantity item, so that gets the quantity and then it gets the string and item is, and it gets the value from extended. So line nine gets the value from item, the value from quantity and the value from extended and prints that first line, the extended cost of 12 blue plastic parrot is 46.8. Take a look at what's happening on line 12. Line 12 is a curious statement. What it's doing is it's taking cost, the existing 3.9, multiplying it by 1.1 or adding 10% to it, making it, I don't know, what is uh, 3.9 times 1.1? And it's then saving that new value of cost back to the variable of cost. Remember, we're calling these things variables, so they can change their value and they can have different values at different points in the computer program. So now on line 12, cost doesn't equal to 3.9 like it did on previous lines. It now has a new value, 10% larger than it originally was. And on line 13, we print the new extended cost of 12 blue plastic parrot is 51.48. You can see how the updated version of cost was used on line 13 because it was variable. We changed it. This concludes our presentation on and introducing variables in your Python programs. This presentation is copyright 2019 by James M. Renault, Ph.D. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu. Remember, this work is distributed and it's licensed to you under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike, 4.0 license. And I would like to say thank you for watching.